Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be talking about something called the cardiac pacemaker potential. Okay? This is really just an action potential, and we're looking at the diagram here to understand what's going on. Now, the thing we want to preface in this video before we go any further is when we talk about the heart, there's two separate action potentials to think about. Okay? There's an action potential for these cells. These are the cells of the electrical conduction system of the heart. So we talked about these in the previous video. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. And I mentioned that these cells have an action potential. It's called a pacemaker potential. That pacemaker potential is only for the electrical conduction system of the heart. Okay, so we have here the structure of that, which we talked about in the previous video. And we're going to talk about it specifically with the sinoatrial node because in a healthy individual, that's the pacemaker of the heart. And that's the pacemaker potential that we're thinking about. Okay? That action potential in this video only applies to these cells. Okay? Later on, we'll see a second action potential that has to do with the muscle itself of the heart, sometimes called the cardiomyocyte action potential or just the cardiac action potential. Okay? This is different than the pacemaker potential. So you have to pay close attention to what you're talking about, what context, all right? Here we're talking about the electrical conduction system of the heart, and the pacemaker of that in normal people is the sinoatrial node. Okay, so let's talk about the pacemaker potential, okay? Here's the action potential diagram. Now, when most people start talking about this, they start talking about it at this first dotted line. That's really where the cycle begins. I'm actually going to go a little bit further back because I feel like it's going to help to understand what's called this pre-potential if we understand what happened in the previous cycle. Now, understand that it's somewhat similar to what we see in skeletal muscle. So remember at the end of skeletal muscle contraction, we had a repolarization. Remember, repolarization is where we take the membrane potential from a positive value and return it to rest. So in other words, the inside of the cell is getting more negative, or we could say less positive. I like to think of it as more negative, but it's going down. Okay? This is the repolarization in green. Okay? Now, the pacemaker cells have three types of voltage-gated channels. They have a voltage-gated sodium channel, a calcium channel, and a potassium channel. The sodium channel is very interesting because the sodium channel will open automatically when the membrane potential gets to negative 60. Okay? So take a look at this repolarization right here from the previous cycle. It starts at, let's say, positive 10. It really doesn't matter the number. It's just a very positive value. And it comes down. It's repolarizing. And then look what it gets down to. Negative 60. What did I say the value was when the sodium channels start to open? Negative 60. So that means that this pacemaker cell doesn't have to do any work or doesn't have to have any external stimulus to get that sodium channel open. All that has to happen is the previous cycle has to finish repolarization and you're automatically at the value you need for that sodium channel to open. And so the sodium channel opens. And we get this slow influx of sodium. This is called the prepotential, and it'll generally take uh, the membrane potential from about negative 60 to negative 40. Why is that significant? Because the calcium channels will open when the membrane potential gets about to negative 40. So at the end of the prepotential, as we're going from negative 60 to negative 40, when you get here, that triggers that calcium channel to open. And the calcium channel is not slow, it's fast. And so we have this rapid depolarization because when calcium comes into the cell, you're putting a positive charge inside the cell, so it depolarizes, it becomes more positive. And so you have a sharp rise in the potential from negative 40, maybe about positive 10, doesn't really matter the exact number. The point is we get that rapid depolarization. And then we get repolarization. So those calcium channels are gonna close and potassium channels are gonna open. And when potassium channels open, remember potassium doesn't influx. 
it effluxes, so it moves out of the cell, making the inside of the cell either less positive or more negative. And so that's going to bring the membrane potential back down to its resting value. But really, the cell's never at rest. It's what we call an unstable membrane potential, or an unstable potential. Why is it unstable? Because it never goes to rest. Why does it never go to rest? Because remember, those sodium channels open at what value? Negative 60. What does the repolarization take it to? Negative 60. These cells never come to rest. Their membrane potential is unstable. Do we want a pacemaker cell to come to rest? Never. What does it mean if a cell's membrane potential comes to rest? It means that whatever that cell's doing, it will stop. For example, a skeletal muscle, okay? Do you need your quadriceps to always be firing? No. Even if you have a stroke and you end up with complete flaccidity in your quads, you will still survive. You may not be able to use the leg, but you'll be alive. What happens if a pacemaker cell stops or comes to rest? You die. Remember the purpose of the electrical conduction system. It's to trigger the heart muscle to contract. These pacemaker cells and the entire electrical conduction system better never come to rest. That is why it is so important that whenever you finish repolarization, you're already at the value you need for the sodium channel to open, and so it never will rest. It'll just keep going. So now, hopefully, you're starting to understand how the heart is autorhythmic and doesn't need nervous system input. The only way it would need nervous system input is if it actually did come to rest, and you had to have an extrinsic source, i.e. the nervous system, to cause the sodium channels to open. Do you need an external source to cause these sodium channels to open? No. It's an intrinsic source, right? It's simply the repolarization of the previous cycle brings it just to the right value and automatically it opens. So there's no extrinsic source needed to cause these action potentials. They happen automatically, intrinsically, and they should always happen. And if they stop happening and these cells come to rest, we are dead. Now, I mentioned that the heart's autorhythmic and does not require nervous system impulses to beat, right? However, parts of the nervous system can modulate the heart rate and they can modulate it by changing this pacemaker potential. They can either make it faster or slower. When we're determining the rate of depolarization, we're really just measuring the distance and time between this peak and this peak. Okay? If those peaks come closer together, the rate of depolarization increases and we have a higher heart rate. If the distance between these two peaks increases, then we have a slower rate of depolarization and a slower heart rate. The vagus nerve, which is a part of the parasympathetic nervous system, will actually increase the distance between these two peaks, which decreases the rate of depolarization and decreases the heart rate. Epinephrine, or just generally the sympathetic nervous system, will decrease the distance between these, making a faster rate of depolarization and therefore a faster heart rate. But the big thing to understand about the pacemaker potential, it never comes to rest. It's unstable. But that instability is good because it makes it to where you don't have to have an extrinsic source to induce depolarization. The depolarization is induced just by the previous repolarization and no external input is needed. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the purpose and the nature of the pacemaker potential. In the next video, we're going to take this and extend it to looking at how the heart muscle contracts. We'll look at the biochemical steps that occur there. Then we'll go and take a look at the cardiomyocyte action potential diagram. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.